Hello, hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have lots of Christmas cards to share, all created using the Stitched for Christmas collection from Spellbinders. The Stitched for Christmas is a collection of dies designed with stitching on paper in mind. These are all Christmas themed and they're great for detailed stitched cards. Now I say detailed and I mean one of a kind cards, unique cards. Stitching takes quite a bit of time, so this is not something I would mass produce. I mean, I know I would want to, but I would probably instead make a bunch of different cards, at least slightly different, you know, where I would try different colors of thread and different colors of paper and all that. Anyhow, I got distracted. Let's look at these new dies. First up, we have this super large stitched Christmas sweater die. This is about the size of an A2 card. And here is an A2 card base to show you the size of this die, you know, so you can see the comparison. You can have it horizontal if you want to fit the sweater completely on your card front. If you place it on a vertical card base, the sleeves go outside the edges of the card. So you'll have to trim them. Or, you know, you can leave them like that and just use a larger envelope. I have seen some really cool card ideas where the sweater is placed at an angle and that looks absolutely amazing. I think that card was created by Joan Bardee and I love her work. Now you can also use this on a 5x7 card or a 6x6 card if you enjoy making cards in that size. I'm typically an A2 a card kind of girl, so that's the size that I stick with. You can also use this die to create shaped cards, and that's what I'll be showing you later on in this video. You also have additional dies in this set. So this is a pretty large set. I think this is an S7. An S7 means the, the higher the number of the next to the S, that means the bigger the set is. So S1 would be a pretty small set, and S7 is currently the largest die set from Spellbinders. So you have additional dies in this set to put on top of your sweater, or you can also use them separately, you know, combine them with any other products you have in your stash. Now the sweater itself is not stitched. It is perforated. These markings on the die will create perforation or indentations in your paper, but not open die kit holes for stitching. So here is a stitched snowflake and you can see it has actual holes. So they're stitching holes and they're much bigger compared to the dots on the sweater. You can poke the perforated holes on the sweater and stitch it. I would probably use a smaller needle for that. And I have seen some cards where this sweater is stitched through these holes. You can actually see a really cool card idea on the Spellbinders website, but the sweater itself does not have the holes for stitching. Now there's also a stitch circle die included and it has a sentiment and even an ornament topper. So you can turn that circle into an ornament, you know, super cute. You can use it alone. You can even turn it into an actual, uh, actual ornament for your Christmas tree, things like that. There's also a stitched Christmas tree. It's just a basic triangle, but it can be stitched and you can add a tree trunk. Now these dies add a neck layer, cuff layers and also a bottom edge layer to your sweater so you can add some color detail to the sweater and I'll show you that in just a little bit once we get to the card making part of this video. Next we have two other sets in this magnetic sheet. So these are the stitched Christmas tree dies. You have three tree shaped dies in here. There's an outline a detail layer, and then a stitched layer. Now, this is a really nice size. It fits an A2 card perfectly with room to add a sentiment above or below your tree. You can also use just the stitching layer alone and die cut it into a card base for a one layer card. And again, I have a card idea to show you that as well. Next, we have the stitched poinsettia in holy dies. And this is actually, uh, this is missing a die. I was just using it and I forgot to put it back here. So we have a stitched poinsettia and then also a solid poinsettia. We have two different leaf sizes or leaf shapes and each has a stitched insert and an outline. 
There's a little flower center for the poinsettia and also dyes to create stitched berries for the holly leaves. Now, I forgot to mention the trunk dyes and the star for the stitched tree. The last die in this collection is my favorite and it is the most versatile. It can be used beyond the Christmas cards and this is the stitched starry argyle. It is a full A2 card panel and this die creates beautiful backgrounds that and there are even lines in the, the die makes on the paper. The lines impress into the paper and these will tell you where the stitched lines need to go. So they will tell you where you need um, you know, how you need to guide your thread as you're stitching this background. And you can stitch a bunch of these backgrounds and just have them ready as backgrounds for when you are creating cards. That's what I did before I started filming this video. I die cut a bunch of backgrounds from different colors of cardstock because I wanted to test all of the different colors. And then I used different kinds of thread, you know, and, and I just stitched away and it was so much fun. So let's start with my favorite seasonal die from this collection, the Stitched Christmas Sweater. I have several die kits ready for you. This first one I made in A2 side folding card base from red cardstock. And I used this sweater die to die cut a shaped card base. Now it was very tricky to die cut because I cut through two layers of cardstock and it was very hard to turn the handle in my machine. So I do not recommend you do this. I will show you a better method for creating a shaped card base using this die. And the reason why it is so hard to die cut it if you are cutting through two layers of cardstock or a card base uh, is all that sweater detail. You know, it has all of these perforated lines. The die is very full. It's very thick. I don't know if, if thick is the right word, but that makes it very difficult to cut through two layers of cardstock. I did die cut additional piece to put on the back of this die cut. So the back of this card would look nice and pretty. I also cut this from specialty paper, and this is Simon Says Stamp Velvet Luxury Cardstock, and luxury it is. This paper is amazing, and it feels like fabric, but cuts like paper. It is available in different colors. There are two mix packs. There's one with shades of blue and another mix pack with Christmas colors, and also another pack with just solid white. I have the Christmas pack and I've used all of it already, well, nearly all of it already. And I need to get some more of this paper as it is absolutely fantastic. Now I use this same cardstock for the stocking on the July large die of the month for Spellbinders. And it is phenomenal paper, very beautiful, highly recommended. Now I also die cut this sweater from green cardstock and light blue paper or cardstock. I also die cut one from regular white to back the velvet cut as that one, the velvet paper is pretty thin. It's kind of flimsy. So you do need to add additional layer to create a sturdy base. So it's best to use some sort of specialty paper if you have it when you're die cutting this sweater. It will not only look great, but it will also have that amazing tactile feeling. Okay, if you want to create a shaped card, go ahead and die cut two identical pieces. Here I have two layers cut from Spellbinders Glacier cardstock. Grab your scoring board and score one piece at the top. I score it at about a quarter inch mark. Then fold along the score line and this little piece, this little section is where you will add glue. Align the layers and let the glue dry. Now the inside of this card is not really usable because again of all of that perforation, you can't write a message on there because you know of all of that detail, but you can add a rectangular uh, die cut inside and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Or you know, you can die cut a circle and place that on the inside or any other shape, just so you have a little bit of room, a little bit of uh, space for your message. I used my magnets to hold this die cut down while the glue is drying and I'm finally using the magnets with my magnetic mat and I really, really love them. I love using them here to press down, you know, to hold uh, the pieces down while the glue is drying. These magnets are much stronger than my regular magnets and they do hold things much better. Okay, so in the meantime, I added the red detail die cuts to the white velvet sweater, and I love this white and red combo. 
I went ahead and I die cut and also stitched the little embellishment pieces for these sweaters. So I have the snowflake die cut from brushed white cardstock. I am down to my last sheet of this paper and it finally came back in stock on the Spellbinders website. So I'll be getting more as I use this paper all the time. It's very beautiful. You know, it's much more luxurious, much more, I, I don't know, I want to say premium compared to the regular cardstock because it is, well, it is a little bit thicker and then also has that beautiful sheen or shine to it. I'm going to pop up the snowflake with foam adhesive and just add a little sentiment across it. And I have my season's greetings sentiment uh, blend for this die cut. And this is uh, from my delightful Christmas collection. Next, I have the ho 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 circle die cut. And I cut this from red cardstock, the same shade as I used for the sweater detail. And I stitched it with gold thread. You'll see that the gold thread was used a lot to stitch these die cuts. You know, it's just, it's pretty universal. I think gold looks really good with everything. It looks good on white, good on red, good on black. You know, whatever color you choose, gold always looks great there. So I use a lot of gold thread. And then the Christmas tree die cut, I cut this one from the same brushed white cardstock. And again, I stitched it with a gold thread and I have the happy holidays sentiment again from my delightful Christmas collection already foiled and cut out. And I plan to have that across the tree. You can also have it on a glacier sweater or on a green sweater. Add a little die cut star at the top, add a tree trunk and the, at the bottom and your card is done. So let's go ahead and pair our die cuts and pre-plan our cards. While I'm doing this, I also wanted to mention a few other ideas for this sweater. Now you can decorate it using little embellishments, make it into an ugly Christmas sweater. You can use other die cuts from your stash. Think maybe last year Christmas die cuts and add any sort of embellishment onto your theme. If you think about it, Christmas sweaters come with all sorts of designs. For example, you can die cut a dog, you know, die cut, do, add a dog die cut or add candy cane die cuts. Or maybe you like gnomes and you have a die for a gnome. So you can die cut a gnome and add a gnome to your sweater or even dress up your sweater with buttons or sequins. Or another idea is if you have um, these cool lights for cards, you can have one of these cool lights um, on your sweater. So you can have your sweater light up. So the sky is the limit. Explore your stash. See what you have. See what embellishments you can incorporate into this sweater. What other die cuts you can incorporate onto it. And just have fun. Have fun playing. I went ahead and I stitched the holly leaves from the stitched poinsettia and holly set. And I also have the little stitched berries. And I'm going to add these to the velvet Christmas sweater. It is my favorite sweater in case you haven't figured that out yet. I'm using loads of foam adhesive as usual to pop the elements up on my card or, or on my sweater. So the sweater is the card. So I'm not going to put any other card base here. I'm not... I'm not going to add the sweater onto a card base. I'm making a shaped card, uh, a card uh, in a form of, in a shape of a sweater. I think it's very effective. You know, it's a gorgeous design and a card like this will be displayed for a long time. I know I will keep one of these sweaters and I'll put it on my mantle for the Christmas season. I also have the red sweater and I stitched the poinsettia here. I added the ornament topper to the little ho 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 circle and I'm adding the poinsettia die cut on top. I die cut the same poinsettia from green cardstock to create some identical green leaves and I stitched those as well and I'm just adding them next to the poinsettia for a pop of green. Now I thought about changing up the ho 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 sentiment while it is attached to the die so you can't technically take it out while you are die cutting. You can add a different sentiment on top. So I thought about maybe foiling or stamping something and then just popping that over the ho 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 to you know customize this die kit and make it your own. Next, I have a card idea to share with the stitched Christmas tree die from the Stitch for Christmas collection. In here, I have already done some die cutting. So I have die cut the, cre the Christmas tree shape from the Spellbinders Forest cardstock. That's the darkest green in the Spellbinders color family. I also die cut the loops layer from the Spellbinders 
gold glitter foam sheets. So that layer is dimensional. And my idea is to stitch the green layer using the gold thread and then add the gold outline. Now you can also die cut the tree directly into your card panel. And I do have a card for you showing that. So you want to go ahead and pop the negative die cut pieces out. If you want, you can save them. And I've seen some really cool, cool card ideas where the tree is not stitched, but inlaid with all sorts of different colors of cardstock to create a colorful, modern, geometric tree. So you have that option. Now, what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to be very careful. I'm trying to keep the main die cut in the die and just remove the negative pieces. When I did this the first time, the die, the die cut stayed in the die much better. It didn't move. Now it's moving a little bit and this is not ideal. If you can have it stay in the die, that's the best uh, the best way to do this because when you cut it out from the foam, the foam is very dainty, it's very uh, detailed and delicate and it doesn't hold the shape. So you want to keep it in the die as much as possible so that the die keeps um, the shape of the foam until you're ready to adhere it. So that's the reason why we're keeping the foam in the die. Next, I used my gold thread and I stitched my Christmas tree die using the gold thread. It's very easy to stitch, you know, as always with the Spellbinder stitching dies, you have lines that are impressed onto the paper that tell you where the stitches need to go. So you basically have a general idea of how the holes need to be connected. You can, of course, stitch these differently. You know, you don't necessarily need to follow the stitching guide that Spellbinders gives you. You have the ability to stitch it however you like. But in case you're new to stitching and you're just learning this, or if you make, if you want to make a quicker card, um, go ahead and follow those uh, lines, those impressed lines on the background. With the stitching die, we can now go ahead and adhere the loops layer on top. So what I like to do is while my die kit is still in, in the die, I go ahead and I add a little bit of glue. I did add a bit too much glue and I should have pressed this die cut onto a scrap piece of paper to get rid of the excess glue, but I didn't. It was still fine. You know, it still worked out fine in the end because this glue dries clear, so it wasn't a problem. But if you do find you add, you're you adding too much glue onto your die cut, you get, can go ahead and do that. Then I laid my die with my die cut onto my work surface and I placed my stitched die cut on top aligning the two pieces. So this, I have, I found this to be the easiest way to align the loops layer if you cut that loops layer from a fun foam. Because like I said, fun foam doesn't really want to hold the shape. It's kind of flimsy. So it sometimes it's a little bit tricky to work with. And if you keep it in the die, if you manage to keep it in the die, it makes it a lot easier to position it because the foam will maintain the shape. I then used my tool in one and I tried to clean most of the glue that oozed out from behind the die cut. And then I just let it sit for a few minutes to let the glue dry. Okay, next to create the card for uh, this die cut, I went ahead and I foiled the Christmas blessings sentiment. The sentiment comes from my delightful Christmas collection. I foiled it in mad gold foil on the Spellbinders brushed black cardstock. I, you know, guys, you, you guys know me. I absolutely love this paper, the brushed black and the brushed white. And I love dramatic cards. I love my black background. So of course I had to use a dark, uh, a dark background for this card. So I foiled my sentiment. I have my little Christmas tree and my idea now is to do some partial 3D embossing in the background. So I can I can just add the Christmas tree as is onto this card and it will look nice. You know, it does look nice because the Christmas tree has some detail. You already have some stitching and then that foil sentiment looks really nice. But I wanted to step my background up a little bit. So I pulled out my 3D embossing folder. This is the 3D embossing folder 
for July 2023 from the Spellbinders Club kits. I particularly love this folder because it's very pretty. I have all of the beautiful holiday imagery in here and I think it works really great with my Christmas tree. So I pulled out my Platinum 6 decadent and embossing machine and I have my universal plate system set up to emboss the 3D embossing folder. So I have my machine all set up and I'm doing just partial embossing here. So I don't have the entire background inside the folder. I just have the top part of the background inserted into the folder. And I'm also not covering the entire folder with the top adapter plate. I'm leaving a little bit of room, just a small gap there so that I don't have a very harsh line where my embossing ends. Now I have a very beautiful background. All I need to do is foam mount my Christmas tree on top. And here's a look at this card. I also added a couple of black gems to this project. I know I have a ton of black. I know black is not for everybody, but I love it. I love dramatic cards. So whenever I can create a card with a black background, I do that. And this was just one of those cards where I felt black would look absolutely amazing. And also why I added the black gems. Next, we have the Stitched Starry Argyle die, which is a large background die for an A2 card. This is one of my favorite non-Christmas dies in this collection. I mean, it is a Christmas die, of course, but it can be used beyond the holiday season because it makes really beautiful backgrounds and you can adapt these backgrounds to your non-holiday cards. So here I die cut and I stitched several backgrounds just to try out different colors of cardstock and different colors of thread. I mostly use the metallic gold thread from DMC. It is available on the Spellbinders website, but I also challenged myself to try and use other thread colors. So here for this red cardstock panel, I use the gold and also the red metallic thread. And I love this look. I didn't stitch the entire background. I just stitched about a half of it. So I stitched every other, um, I guess, every other row just to have a different, different type of look, different result. This next panel, this is the Spellbinders Glacier cardstock. And here I tried using the non-metallic thread. This was the blue ombre thread from DMC. I used three strands of thread here. I don't quite like how thick this is. I would have liked it thinner. I would have liked it more delicate. But again, I just wanted to test and see how this would look. This next background, this was cut from the Spellbinders brushed white and I stitched it using white, gold and red metallic threads. I didn't finish it because I actually ran out of the white thread. I don't have any left in my stash. So it, this background looks almost finished, but if you look closely, you'll notice that it is missing some of the white stitching. The next background is done on that same brushed white cardstock. And here I stitched it in ombre red and ombre green. I wish I used a lighter red thread color. I think this one looks a little bit too dark, but I still wanted to share it. Now this next one is among my favorites. I used the darkest Spellbinders green cardstock and I stitched it using the green metallic thread. I stitched the entire background, so everything is stitched here, and I really love the result. This next panel is stitched on the Spellbinders Alabaster cardstock, and I used the gold metallic thread. And again, I stitched the entire background, so just one single thread for this one. And the last I have is the Spellbinders Indigo cardstock, and here I combined black thread with gold thread, and I love this. I love how the black looks against the blue. There's a lot of contrast, a lot of drama. It's one of my favorite backgrounds. With the backgrounds created, I wanted to turn some of these into cards and I turned back to the dies from these Stitch for Christmas collection. So here I have the stitched poinsettia and holly and I already created several poinsettias from the Spellbinders brushed white cardstock and I also die cut the leaves from various shades of green. Now I used the solid uh, poinsettia die here, not the one with the stitched holes and I love this look. I do have the stitch points out of here just to show you the comparison. So you have options, you know, if you want to stitch your points out, go ahead and stitch it. If you don't want to stitch it, if you want to have just a solid points out, 
you have that option as well. So I die cut uh, two layers for each poinsettia. I shaped the petals slightly using my fingers. I just gave them a little bit of the curve and I added the centers using gold glitter cardstock and also gold glitter pop-up foam die cutting sheets. So my flower center is slightly dimensional. I pre-planned the image placement. I wanted to have a grouping of poinsettias in the center. And then I used my foam adhesive squares and I popped the poinsettias up onto my card. I only added the foam adhesive square in the center of each poinsettia. I did not pop up the petals or the leaves. I wanted them to be loose, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. I wanted them to be loose on my background and I needed that to be able to tuck the leaves behind the poinsettias. So I pre-planned the leaf placement and then once again, I used foam adhesive squares to adhere these in place. And then for the sentiment, I foiled a simple one that reads joy to the world. And the sentiment comes from my delightful Christmas collection that was just released several days ago. With the front panel created, I decided I needed to pop this background up on a card base. So I first created a card base from a slightly darker red card stock. So there is a very a color variation, a slight color variation happening here. And I wanted to be able to see that slightly darker red through the die cut openings, through the stitching holes. So I used thin foam adhesive squares. I added a bunch from the back of my panel, and then I used those to pop the panel up on my card base. I should have done that before I added the poinsettias, but I didn't think of that ahead of time. So I'm doing it now. I love this look. I love this result. My front panel has a little bit of dimension to it. It looks a little bit more interesting. You can see that slightly darker red through the openings and it just, it just looks a little bit better, I think. I used Color Essential Gems from Spellbinders in color green and I scattered several around the poinsettias just to add a little bit more sparkle to this card. Now here's that blue background that was stitched with the black and green thread. And for this one, I went back to a set of sentiments from Spellbinders that was released last year. And these sentiments are from the Parcel and Post collection. They're from the Christmas Mailbox Greetings Glimmer Hot Foil Plate Set. I absolutely adore these sentiments. I love how they're structured, you know, into a vertical rectangle. I, I use them a lot. Um, I have them almost... I, I have them on my desk nearly all the time and I go back to them over and over again. Now I also used a rectangle die from the Parcel and Post mailbox die set to die cut that foiled sentiment out and that that rectangle die it matches the sentiment plates perfectly. It, it, the, that rectangle is designed to coordinate with the sentiments. So of course it cuts them out perfectly. So I have my little sentiment panel. I've added black foam adhesive from the back and I'm just going to foam mount that in the center of my panel. And I love this. It's very clean and simple look. It also looks great as a masculine Christmas card because you have that beautiful argyle and the colors are also very masculine. I then used a couple of die cuts from another die set from that same Parcel and Post collection from the Parcel and Post Christmas decorations. I die cut some holly leaves, I die cut a bow, and I die cut a branch with berries and I just added them at the bottom of my sentiment panel and I love the result. Okay, let's take a look at all of the cards I have for you today created with the Stitched for Christmas dies from Spellbinders. Like I said, love this collection. It is brilliant. It is gorgeous. That sweater die is absolutely amazing. The Stitched Argyle plate is phenomenal. It's something that I know I will keep coming back to over and over again. Here's that next card with the stitched argyle and the parcel and post sentiment and decorations. This one is also popped up on the card. You can't really see that, but it is popped up. Now here is the card with the green stitched background. 
I used an art die to create an arched sentiment for this card. I found one, I found a sentiment with that curve at the top with like a semicircle. And I thought that it would look really great uh, if I used an arch die to die cut it. So the die, the top of the die cut would follow that curve. And then I just added a little poinsettia at the bottom, some holly leaves and another branch with the berries. Love it. So that's the look at all of the Christmas cards I have for you today created with the Stitched for Christmas collection from Spellbinders. I absolutely adore these products. I think they're super versatile. They're great for Christmas cards. That background plate is also fantastic to use all year round. And overall, stitching dies, there's something special about them. I find them very therapeutic. Uh, sometimes I can't sleep at night, so I will get up, I will go to my craft room, and I will sit down and start stitching. And it helps me to start to feel sleepy. And then after stitching a panel, I can just go back to sleep. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. All the products mentioned today are linked in the video description below. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.